right, good morning everybody. So I wanna show you a couple things for making Naracomi. So that's where you're taking your colored clays and you're blending them together to make a picture inside basically a coil. So uh, to start with, we need to roll out some clay. Now, normally in this class, we use one fourth inch thick sticks. Uh, we can use one eighth inch for this or one fourth inch for this. I wouldn't go much thicker than that. Um, but that, that's what I'm going for. I'm gonna have, uh, so I already rolled out a couple. So I have my blue is one fourth and then my green is one eighth. And I'm gonna show you how to make this. I'm gonna use this black to show you how to make the one eighth. Um, so basically you just gotta ask me for the one eighth inch stick, right? But a little bit different, you don't wanna roll this directly on the table and I'm not using canvas for this one, just because depending on the color, like especially the green leaves marks on there, okay? Now I do wanna keep as much of my clay um, as possible, like make it useful. So when I'm flattening it out, instead of just like bing, 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 like flattening it out like that, I am trying to make it more of a rectangle shape to start off with so that it's easier for me to do my rolling. So I spent a little bit of extra time kind of getting that into the shape that I wanted. Now I got an extra piece of paper. It could be newsprint. It could be like this extra packing material that I have right now, but you want something on the table. And then um, you're just going to, so I put my one eighth inch sticks on either side. Um, you need to make sure just like with rolling a regular slab that your rolling pin will balance on the sticks. Uh, and since we're making such small slabs, like right now it clearly does. The other thing, you know, you're just going to basically do it like you would normally do it. You just have to be a little bit more careful because we don't want to rip the paper, but we also don't want to like waste this clay. Uh, so right now I've just kind of made it a little bit longer. If I want it to be wider, I need to rotate the clay. All right. Like just moving the sticks out of the way and making it crazy thin doesn't do you any good. Okay. If you want it to be wider, you need to rotate the clay because you only have a certain amount of clay. All right. So here we go. Um, the other thing is if you do, especially like I said, that green tends to leave marks on the rolling pin. Just ask me, oh, it's getting a little sticky. If it's really fresh or your rolling pin's been used a bunch, um, sometimes it sticks a little bit, in which case try to like scoot it over on the rolling pin while still making sure your rolling pin is balanced on the sticks. But if you do, like if you pick a green or something, if it leaves any stuff on the rolling pin, just ask me for one of the alcohol wipes um, so we can make sure it gets off of the rolling pin and like dries quickly. Um, so that way you can still use the rolling pin. So now I've got three different colors. I have two that are one eighth inch thick. So they're really thin. And then I have one that is a fourth inch thick. So now at this point, I have to decide how to make my design, right? So I've got my slabs. I can use a needle tool and I can cut out different shapes that I need. Um, or if I have a little extra clay, I can add coils and stuff like that. So like for me, I'm going to start with a bullet cane. Basically we're making canes, um, which is a technique that you can do in polymer clay as well, but it works for color clays. Like it works exactly the same. So like other than it's actual clay, it's ceramic clay. So if you are like, Ooh, I want to make one of those super fancy kaleidoscope ones, just go find one that's a polymer clay one and then just do it in regular clay and it's, it'll totally work. So I'm going to start my bullet cane with a coil of my black clay. So I made my, I went ahead and made my coil and I'm going to trim the edges. I'm just going to save that. I'm going to set it over there. And then let's see, my green coil is about that big. So I'm just going to be like, I'm going to make it a little bit shorter because my uh, slab isn't perfectly square, right? 
So this color clay, make sure it does not end up in the recycle bin, okay? Like this clay, we can recycle it separately, but we cannot uh, recycle it with the white clay. Otherwise, we won't have any more white clay. So keep your clay boogie separate from everybody else's stuff. All right, so all I did right now, as you can see, I did one edge straight. Like I just cut a straight edge on my thing here, on my slab. And I'm gonna take my little coil of black clay and I'm gonna roll it up. Okay, so I'm just rolling it. And I wanna keep it fairly tight. If it has a little bit of cracking, that's okay. The main thing with this is you can't take forever on this. If you take forever with this, the clay is gonna get too dry and then that is gonna make it really hard. So now I have my coil of clay, like my slab wrapped around my coil of clay. And what I wanna do is that lip where I cut it, I wanna squish it down so that way um, it kind of matches, right? Like I want it to match the rest. Now I can decide. So like right now I have like the simplest colored clay cane because I have a dot in the middle with a, a black with a green around it, okay? So now, oh man, I, okay, I'll just use this thing. Um, I was just thinking I don't have my, I don't have my slicer out. I was unprepared. That is not normal for me. Okay, so the next thing I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna add on the blue. Now, if this was too, like, too thick, I could roll this flatter and that black and the green would stay, it would just get thinner. Um, but I think I'm gonna leave it and I'm gonna do the same technique that I just did, but I'm gonna use this blue clay. So I cut one side straight and now I'm rolling that around. If it doesn't go quite all the way to the edges, that's okay. Uh, it just means you'll have less cane later save this blue clay you could use it for detail stuff or make it into coils or something so now again I have that little like pointy bit here so I'm just gonna kind of flatten it out you want to try to avoid air bubbles as much as you can so that means like rolling it tight not having it having it loose so you can kind of start in the middle a little bit of rolling and roll it towards the outside that helps make sure that there's no air bubbles in it you just want to do it just a little bit so now I have black green and blue all wrapped around so now I think I'm gonna do one more layer of black just because I don't know I think it'll look cool right now this one's whiter so if I want to make it if I want to reduce the cane that's what it's called when you make it longer if I want to reduce my cane I can roll it on the table and make it a little bit longer just kind of keep checking it and do it little bits at a time and just try to keep it as even as you possibly can. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut that one edge straight again and I am going to roll up my last color. So I'm repeating a color, that's totally fine. You could also add in like white clay in here, so just like our regular clay. If you added in a slab of just regular clay into this, uh, that looks fabulous as well, because it's just, it turns white, right? So it would just add another layer. So now I still have that little pointy bit, so now I'm gonna kinda squish it together a little bit. Now notice I didn't really slip and score any of these, because this clay, since I just made this colored clay, it's pretty moist and if I tried to slip and score in between this like it would be super funky with my colors and it's really wet so I'm just gonna kind of like I said start in the middle roll your way out make sure there's no clay boogies now the fun part because like on the edges you can see kind of what it's gonna look like but it's kind of like uh, it doesn't really look like anything so oh yeah I'm gonna use this okay I'm gonna try this now you can use your slicer from the polymer clay stuff if we were doing polymer clay this year, um, or you can use the wire cutter. I'm gonna use this wire cutter just cause I think it's cool. So I'm gonna set the wire on the table. I'm gonna hold my, like I'm laying my cane over the top and I'm gonna hold my cane gently with my finger and I'm gonna pull up. 
and I'm gonna cut through. Now, since this was close to my end, it's a little messy. So I didn't get all the way through all my stuff. So I'm just gonna set that one to the side and be like, I'm not gonna use that one. Now, when you set it on here, kind of look and see you're trying for like the one fourth inch thick, right? So I put my um, string right at one fourth inch thick and I'm gonna pull straight up, boink. Oh yeah, there we go. So now you can see that this has all those colors, right? And it's still fresh clay, so I can still, I can squish it a little bit to make it whiter if I want to, like if I wanna make a medallion out of it, I could like make this a pair of earrings and put like, you know, punch a hole in it, right? But I basically have this little colorful clay slab. Now, if you want it round, great. There you go. If you want this to be square or you want to add in, you know, some other cool technique or design, you can totally do that. Like I'm going to take a clean, uh, I'm going to add a little bit more visual interest to this. So I'm going to take a clean rib and I'm just going to push down into this. And I'm basically like just cutting a little line all the way across and I'm going to open it just a little bit and I'm going to take a little tiny bit of my green clay and I'm going to make a little baby coil and I'm going to add in a little baby coil and then I'm going to close it back up again. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to stick it in here and I'm just going to like stick that stick that in there and then I'm gonna roll it again a little bit just make sure it's real squished in there good no air bubbles okay so I've added that little bit in I want to I think I'm gonna do there's another thing that you can do where like if you take the edge of something you can push the edge of something kind of down into it and that'll just distort your um, circle a little bit. So it'll just it'll just change the shape just a little bit. Um, now I kind of want mine square because I'm gonna do a technique later where I'm gonna use something that is uh, I'm gonna add in something that's square. So I'm gonna add since I dented over here, I'm gonna add in a cu another couple little green coils. Oh, don't roll it on the table. It leaves a green mark. <laughs> roll it on the paper. Eeny, meeny, meeny, which is easier said than done. You can do it. Okay. So I've kind of just squished it into a square shape. And since I added those little marks, I'm just going to add some green clay in there. And then um, in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can add this into like you're a molded bowl. If you have a big enough cane, you could actually make the entire bowl out of your Narakomi block. Um, Cause if you layer this, then it becomes a Narakomi block. Um, but it's kind of up to you. So there's all kinds of different techniques. But like I said, uh, if you Google polymer clay canes, there's all kinds of super fun, crazy, things that you can do with these. So anyway, like I said, the next video, once you have your cane, I will show you how to add that cane into a molded bowl or some other type of item. All right. So thanks everybody. Happy creating and you know, be creative, make it a good day and I'll see you next time. Thanks everybody.